Presented by Caltech. Hi, I'm Harry Atwater, and in our group we make and design and fabricate artificial photonic materials. I'm the Howard Hughes Professor of Applied Physics and Material Science here in the Division of Engineering and Applied Science at Caltech. In 2009, I began service as the founding director of the Resnick Sustainability Institute, which is Caltech's Center for Energy Science and Sustainability. In the same year, I also became director of the Light Material Interactions Energy Frontier Research Center, a DOE program dedicated to understanding how photonic design of materials can enhance solar conversion efficiency. Currently, I serve as director of the Joint Center for Artificial Photosynthesis, a DOE energy innovation hub committed to the development of chemical fuels directly from sunlight. These centers are at the heart of our research group's work, which is exploring themes in the area of nanophotonics, which is the science of the interaction of light with materials whose characteristic length scale is below the scale of the optical wavelength itself. Caltech had an early vision for the notion and the discipline of applied physics a discipline that existed at the intersection of physics and engineering, for example, where understanding the atomistic, uh, quantum, and statistical physics properties of materials and phenomena would have an impact on the technologies of the future. And this was something that was obvious to some of our senior colleagues at Caltech as early as the 1960s and 70s. And the applied physics program that was begun at Caltech served as a blueprint for applied physics programs that then began to proliferate around the country. I grew up in the 1970s, and uh, that was the first wave of concern and interest in energy in the United States. We had gasoline shortages during the oil embargoes of the 1970s, gasoline being rationed, fuel being short and unavailable for my school, and my school was closed during the winter time, one winter, and that made a big impression on me. I always harbored the idea that later in life, if I had an opportunity, I would try to work in an area of technology or science that could address uh, energy challenges. So what our group is focused on our photovoltaic devices in which photonic design allows us to achieve unprecedented efficiencies. And one of the things we're going to see today is the developments in a project we call the Full Spectrum Photovoltaics Project. And the goal of this project is to achieve unprecedented conversion efficiencies in the range of 40 to 50 percent conversion efficiencies. Today's typical photovoltaic devices have efficiencies a little less than 20 percent. And the way that we do this is to split the solar spectrum into its constituent colors. Uh, and by directing each color uh, as it would, say, uh, emanate from an LED or a laser onto a solar cell that's resonant uh, in its absorption properties with that color, we can achieve very high conversion efficiencies. So we're going to go down to the lab and visit with a student in the group, Sunita Darby, who's going to tell us about some of the work that she's doing on spectrum splitting optics for a very high efficiency full spectrum photovoltaic system. Hello. As Harry mentioned, one of the projects that we're working on in our research group is to design and prototype an unprecedentedly high efficiency photovoltaic module. We're working on a design that we call the polyhedral specular reflector. It incorporates seven different solar cells of different band gaps, which allow us to recover some of the energy that's lost in a traditional single junction solar cell. White solar light comes in the top. It's allowed to pass through at the appropriate point by passing through a series of dichroic filters. So the first filter that we see is a long pass filter that allows just the longest wavelengths of light to pass through. The second one is a short pass filter that's allowing just the bluest light to pass through to a high band gap cell. And the receivers are each made up of a concentrating optic and a solar cell, which you can see attached to the yellow printed circuit board at the end. Here we have a partial optical prototype that shows the central parallelopiped piece along with our first two filters, the long pass and a short pass filter, and three concentrators. When I shine a green laser pointer at the input of the device, you see that the first long pass filter reflects the green light, but the second short pass filter passes it through 
The light is then concentrated and ends up primarily at the tip of the second concentrator. When I shine red laser light on the device, both the long pass and the short pass filters reflect it, so it ends up predominantly at the bottom output of the third concentrator. What's really exciting about working on the full spectrum photovoltaics project is that in addition to getting to work on cutting edge optics for spectrum splitting, we're actually seeing the project through to building a full functional prototype. And we're thinking about all aspects of the system design down to the cost modeling. It's a very applied project. In fact, we've had a couple of patent applications come out of it already. Solar and renewable energy is playing an increasing role in energy production in the world today. In fact, the solar photovoltaics technology has gone from being a niche activity, a boutique industry, and over the last 10 years has grown to a worldwide uh, manufacturing technology and is posed to become the largest optoelectronics industry in the world. So this is a fantastic opportunity for researchers in photonics to have an impact on a growing technology that is going to bring uh, new forms of energy, uh, renewable energy, uh, into our energy supply mix. We're really working on something that would be revolutionary. <laughs>